So the uh, eruption from Mauna Loa continues at this time. Um, however, there has been a significant change in activity. Um, as of this morning, we've all been focused on the proximity of the advancing lava flows on the saddle towards the Daniel Keinoi ha uh, Highway. Um, as of this morning, our normal measurements uh, satellite based in this case uh, was 1.76 miles from the highway. Again, 1.76 miles. Um, however, this will uh, is no longer um, going to be a, a major concern in the mornings at the present time um, because the uh, the lava flows, the lava that has been feeding these flows approaching the highway, um, the lava supply has been cut off as of this morning. Um, our HVO field crews have been out in the morning since sunup making observations, um, and they've reported that while the eruption continues out of Fisher 3, the currently active Fisher, um, the uh, supply from Fisher 3 down to the flow front um, has been cut off. Um, so Fisher 3 continues to erupt, but it's no longer feeding the major channel going towards the highway. Lava is coming out, um, what appears to be a, a reduced production rate. Um, and it's coming around on the channel. You can actually see it with our uh, YouTube live feed. That live feed has been, been going in and out, unfortunately, but you can see it now. Whereas yesterday you saw the vent and the fountaining and a really well-established and rapidly moving uh, river of lava. You don't see that this morning. You'll see flows coming out. And right now those flows have not organized into a major channel or anything like that. So at this time, the flows are kind of just flowing out from Fisher 3, covering up previously erupted lavas. Um, and there's no major uh, organized new lava flow at this time. Um, and we'll see what happens over the next couple of days. Um, something in passing, uh, the uh, height of the uh, fountains coming out of Fisher 3 uh, was much higher last night than, than, um, than it has been typically. Uh, this was noticed by people all around the island, people out there, um, even from my house in Volcano. It was kind of like, whoa, those fountains look a little taller tonight, um, uh, last night. And indeed they were. Um, we don't have a good estimate on how they were, but they were several hundreds of feet at least. Um, so a noticeable change in the fountain heights last night. Um, and we were having discussions as we were making our, our observations and doing the analysis. You know, what, what could be causing this? Could it be uh, an increase in the volume of material coming out? Or it could be a constriction of the vent. Um, so imagine you know, you've got your garden hose and you put your thumb over the end of the garden hose and you're squeezing it out and that'll make the, the, the water come out. So it could be a constriction of Fisher 3 last night that caused the, the fountains or it could be a change in the supply rate. We are still out there making observations and uh, piecing together um, kind of causes and effects and trying to understand the relationship of the things that we've seen over the last 12 hours. Um, so we will continue to be making uh, observations from the field, getting a better picture of what's happening and what might come next. Um, and so to do that, uh, we have our uh, Mauna Loa expert, um, Frank Truesdale. Um, I'm delighted to... Uh, to have him give us an update um, from the field and, and the latest developments and, and, uh, um, and give some analysis of that. And um, before going over to Frank, I'll just reemphasize again, um, despite this change in, in activity, uh, there is no immediate threat to island communities or infrastructure at this time. The only other thing I'll add to uh, David's update is that the lavas are above the observatory road. And so there are no actively fed flows below the observatory road. Uh, people will see residual activity along the fronts as the channels drain. They're no longer being fed and there'll be some residual activity and creep of the flows. Because the channels have been cut off or the distal parts of the flow have been cut off from from magma, one of the questions that pop people are wondering is that if we have additional flow in the channel, can that then reactivate the flow front and push the lava closer to the highway? And because we're dealing with uh -uh flows, it's very unlikely that in, in a supply of, of molten material from the top will push the flow fronts at the distal margins ahead. Essentially, we have to renew the entire flow field with supply directly from Fisher Tree to go all the way back down the entire distance to become a threat. So right now, we don't expect that the new lava coming out on the surface 
to be able to replenish the supply to the flows that are closest to Daniel K. Inouye Highway. So we're, we, at this point in time, don't have any clear indicators to say that uh, what is the substantial change in the vent activity. So one possible scenario for why the fountains are higher is, as David explained earlier, you could have had a constriction in where the lava is coming out of the ground and that that constriction, if the pressure is the same, but the aperture is smaller, you can drive the fountains higher into the air. One other thought is from the historical record is that early on in Mauna Loa lava flows, you have fissure vents and you have the production of AA where the effusion rates are high. And three different historical eruptions went from AA early in the eruption and transition to Pahoehoe. And the Pahoehoe is moderate to low effusion rates. And so we may be in that transition. So one of the things that we're doing is collecting molten samples. And the samples then give us inference as to whether or not we're also transitioning from a high effusion rate to a moderate to low effusion rate. I think DOT, I'm not sure if they're on the line, but state DOT has prohibited parking up on the Mauna Kea access road up until Mauna Road. So it's about that two mile stretch. Part of the reason for doing that is that there is tall grasses and we're trying to prevent a brush fire. We, we don't need two uh, different things going on at the same time. So we ask people not to park on the Mauna Loa Mauna, excuse me, Mauna Kea access road, which is the opposite side from the uh, Mauna Loa uh, lava. And the, this is the Mauna Kea Ohana, along with the Royal Order of Kamehameha, who has uh, taken responsibility for the area um, nearest to Pu'uhuluhulu from about 2019 until the present. And so um, as we do, uh, when we are preparing for the arrival of Pele, it is uh, a, it is a practice for many of us to prepare our homes, prepare the areas where we live, and to make sure that um, that these areas are clean. And that is just something that we we know occurred um, over the last several. Um, opportunities for Pele to come and visit in Puna, for example. So our Hawaiian families always do that. And in that light, we are meeting tomorrow uh, with the Mauna Kea Ohana and Royal Order of Kamehameha uh, to make sure that any man-made um, uh, man-made items that remain along the highway from approximately the Mauna Loa access road all the way to and including uh, Pu'uhuluhulu. A lot of it are large uh, pieces, tent, um, tent frames, for example, um, some of which has been uh, damaged in recent weather. Um, we will uh, do the best we can to remove all of that and to make sure that uh, when Pele comes, that the place is as clean as we can make it for her. And that that is what we're doing. We have put out the word to our community. And uh, so you may see some activity there tomorrow. It's not a ceremony per se. It's, a, it's an activity that we choose to do. And also, you know, urge our community and visitors to to take your Apollo with you when you come and visit, you know, to uh, make sure um, you don't leave any trash behind so that uh, the area can be as clean as possible. And if and when uh, Pele decides to come into that area, we know we've done our, our job.